you get so you don't you have to miss a moment of the action. Up close and personal, huh? <laughs> That's why they keep us back here and above the ring, so we don't have to get quite so close and personal. Ugh, that's true. Ugh. Yeah, I don't want to be in Mad Mike's way when he com if he comes to the ring angry. No, that's just not my fun. Oh, hell no. No way. Me neither. His ugly ass. Ugh. Oh, Solomon, it, it, it could be arranged if you really want it. Here we go. All right, ladies and gentlemen, it is 12 noon on a Saturday. That means it is time for DCWF Saturday Showdown. Lots going on in the world of DCWF coming over the next two or three uh, weeks to a month and a half, two months. And we're going to tell you all about it here tonight on Showdown. You're going to get a lot of great information. Uh, if you are a fan of professional wrestling and you like to TPN your friends, TPN your enemies, go ahead and do that now. Make sure you TP them in behind the barricade as well. We have all kinds of goodies on the outside of the ring for you. Band just uh, crowd noises, applications, and the like. Make sure you're hitting up everything as well. If you like what you see and you want to show us a little wind and love, we are not for profit. There is a donation box right down here in front of the commentary table. Make sure if you like to show us a little wind and love, that's how you do it. And I am DCWF Commissioner Numbers, the Bull, Rossini, and sitting with me is, fellas, say hello to the people. Hello, people. I am Kyrie Paramore, the boy diva over at Chiba. And sitting to my right is... Killian Sandalwood. I'm, I'm the uh, innocent guy up here. We'll be taking you through the action here tonight on DCWF Saturday Showdown. And we are going to go ahead and get started with this first match. Fellas, I'm excited about this first one because, you know, no matter what you think about the count sparkles von quinworth and he always delivers in the ring he always brings a show and he's going to be out here tonight yeah it's going to be the first time i've seen Sp uh sparkles in a while in the ring so it should be interesting um we also got some diamonds action going on what do you think about that guys so we got us a tag team match with that the, could the break champions. down with the people involved in it, I feel it could break down in an instant. Oh yeah, there's a lot of beefing going on with these four here. <laughs> so almost anything can happen. We'll just bar the doors and let them go at it. Oh yes, 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 yes. And no we also got no shy, no bullshit, just pure wrestling. As we are said to kick off this first match, fellas, let's bring them out. All right. Introducing first, 
from the Great Ivory Tower. He weighs in at 190 pounds. This is the Duke of the DCWF, Sparkles Von Quinworth. Coming to us from Naples, Italy, he is the Intertender Cruiserweight Champion, Mr. Mafioso, William Naples. All right, and our referee for this match will be Dick Witham. Mr. Mafioso, William Naples set to take on the, the Duke, the Count, whatever you want, the King, the Queen, whatever you feel like you want to call him, Sparkles <laughs> Von Quinworth, former DCWF Cruiserweight Champion, by the way, recently returning to the DCWF, looking Ooh. to uh, regain a shot at his former crown, and this one's underway. Yeah, Merrick just showing up. Sparkles there. Oh, Sparkles gets up pretty strong. Oh, but that hip toss gives him back all that control. But for how long? Oh, that eye rake to the face. And he's pretty much just taking full control here. Now we're having Merrick in the headlock here. William Naples. Yeah, he's just saying, now let's see how you handle this maggot. Uh, Sparky hey. Keenan, I've said this a hundred times, Sparkles Von Quinworth might be the, the smartest in-ring competitor in all of Second Life Wrestling. He was a ref for years. He's got more time in that squared circle than probably anybody in the business today. He's seen it all, and ever since he started competing, he's used that wealth of knowledge that he's had uh, and that he's built up over the years uh, to really get himself an edge. And there goes Mr. Mavioso off the rope. Oh. Then... Naples there, just going with all those speedy moves on Sparkles there. Now he's going for the pin. One, two. Yeah, it wasn't enough, apparently. 
But yeah, I'd have to agree. He's that most Sparkle. intellectual in the ring, intellectually gifted here. Well, so he right pretty now. much knows what the limits are, how far he can go. Yeah, he'll do anything to take what it wins. Throws him into rope. Oh, snap, suplex. But then he just gives him time. Hmm. Oh, he knows what he's doing. Don't worry about that. Drops the knee on his uh, abdomen. Quick two count. That's all Sparkles gets. Oh, Naples with the pin there, but Sparky there, he broke it out in time. William tried to go for the pin once again, but no, he's going to have to do a lot more work to take Sparkles down. Sparkles is getting up a bit frustrated. Oh, another knee to the midsection. Uh, if there's one thing Naples oh. is known for is his speed, but... Oh, Sparky another there vicious with eye ring. Here. Sparky with that strong style, Irig. Sparky Keenan not above style. doing what he's got to do in this ring to win a match. That's why he's a multiple-time champion. Uh, in all honesty, he probably held on to the Cruiserweight title longer than anybody has held on to any title in the DCWF since its inception seven years ago. Uh, the man certainly knows how to uh, to win matches, and he doesn't mind putting that eye rake in there and going for that pin attempt on Mr. Mafioso. Only a 2.9856Q, 204.865 count, though. Oh, Jesus, seriously? Can you just say two? <laughs> Irish whip to the corner. Sparkles look a little winded at this point. Oh, a big boot to the face. Hey, it's just an off season. He'll probably get up. He'll get up. Only a two count again. Only a two count. I... Now, as you can see here, he can take it as much as he can oh. dish it out. Sparkles. Drop toll. Hold now. Yeah, yeah, say what you want like about Sparky Keenan, say what you want about his tactics in the ring. He, he's a great technician. He's a great mat wrestler. And he if he could keep Mr. Mafioso out of the air and down on the mat where Sparky does his best work, he's got a real chance of pulling this one out. Well, he's already taking full control of this match so far. Goes for another pin. pin here. One, two... No. Oh, there's a lot more work to be done on Naples. A fist drop, or a strong uh, forearm drop. Sparkle. Sparkle's looking for his next maneuver. Bows to the crowd. Hey, he got a bow to the crowd. That's 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 showing class right there. <laughs> well, he he able considers to... the crowd his subjects. Oh yeah, they are his subjects. Schoolboy oh, roll up. Deals with the pin. No, only a two count once again. He's probably gonna need some life saw. Ugh. Sparkles getting up frustrated, shaking it off. Oh. Oh, he flips him over out of the ring, but 
Naples is holding on to the ropes. See what what William snaps himself back into the ring. Turn around there, Sparkles. Oh, two big boots. Sidekick. Ooh. Oh, running in Siguri from William. Ouch. But will this Slow keep Sparkles down? Who knows? Slow pin by no. William. <laughs> Not yet, Maggot. Sparky Keenan managing to hold his own against William Naples here as uh, these guys haven't been able to put each other away yet at all. Oh, as Sparky catches him, DDT, this could be it. William Naples flat out on the mat. Wait, he's going and for the sharpshooter. And he goes for that sharpshooter. Now he's just telling William to scream, maggot, scream. Oh, William, William's able to get himself over to the ropes. William's in the ropes. Referee's got a break. Oh, so the referee did ask him. Oh, okay. Four count on the break. Yeah, now Sparkles is just dragging him to the middle of the ring here. And a fist oh. drop. Apparently on the leg. That should stop William there from running all the time. Oh, clever, clever, very clever. William gets up a bit hurt. Oh, trading now he's blows. Still trading blows. Wow. A chain, a chain of maneuvers. Yo, William, they're now taking full control. William stomped in the ring for him to get up. And Sparkles bails out of the ring. No, that's not bailing. That's re-strategizing. That's what I call it. Who's bailing? No one's bailing. He hasn't walked out onto the back. That's how you know. William, I'm standing on the top rope watching Sparkles. Oh, uh, he's a tightrope walker now. Oh. Somersault. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. And on the outside of the ring, Sparky grabs that bat and pummels William Naples with it, leading to the disqualification. Mr. Mafioso taken out. Uh, Mafia style with a baseball bat, and he'll get the win here, but uh, Sparky looks like he gets the last laugh. You never know what's going to happen here at DCWF Showdown. Oh, no, no, no. It is. We are, we are a spontaneous group of people.
Alright, what a hell of a way to start DCWF Saturday Showdown. Sparky with that cane uh, just laying in to the Cruiserweight Champion. And this could wind up being uh, this could wind up being a long and interesting road for these two because we all know Sparky's trying to get uh, back into good graces at Cruiserweight title run. And Merrick, uh, Mr. Mafioso William Naples, is constantly, constantly trying to fend off any and all challengers. Uh, stay tuned to DCWF Facebook and check out what that looks like. And we talked about this a couple weeks ago. We made this announcement that DCWF is partnering with Res TV and our content uh, will now be on Res TV starting in May. Uh, the irony of all of that is it will uh, it will it will air on Wednesday night, 3 p.m. in our old Warzone spot. So you can check out DCWF Full Tilt Wednesday nights on Res TV. I'm excited because I'm a media whore and I'm gonna love being on the TV. Gee, there's something very different for me. I ha I've never been exposed to the television coverage like that, so it'll be interesting. Well, don't be, don't get too nervous, Killian. Okay. Well, hey, I am the new guy around here, so uh, I get to be nervous. Mm hmm. Well, anyways, um, I believe you'll be fine, boys. You'll be fine. No, oh, I know I'm fine. Is... I know I'll be fine. Oh, we got us a cheerleader coming out here. High five. Oh, we've got hey. cheerleader Mickey coming in here. <laughs> cheerleader Mickey, all, right. and all her pom poms, pom poming in the middle of the ring. Uh, yeah, she's giving school spirit to the DCWF crowd. She's given something to the DCF crowd. I'm still not sure what. DCWF. Oh, she got the megaphone out here. Hope somebody took the batteries out of it. Oh, the day has finally come for Anastasia to defend her chaos briefcase against me. But where is she? I don't see her anywhere. Oh, that's right. It seems Ray and I were a little too rough on the poor deer last week. And we accidentally end up injuring her so she's not clear to wrestle today. 
Oh, I see. Mm, yeah, it was last week. To be fair, I never meant for this to happen. All I wanted was to bang her up a little so she would be a little worse for wear when she faced me today, so I could get the easy win. And that's some good idea right there. Mm. But instead, she's laying on some hospital bed, eating applesauce and reading magazines while I'm here, bored out of my mind, waiting for nothing more than my chaos briefcase. This is just so typical, you know? Why can't I ever get my way in this place? Now, oh, why can't she? Can we just get on with it? God damn it. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm going to get my way next week, that's for sure. Because I've spoken to the DCWF board and they agree if Anastasia isn't here next week to defend the briefcase against me at April Fool's, Hardcore rules, she forfeits it, and I become the default holder. Go, I say, go away, boy, you bother me. Hmm. <clears throat> That's an interesting twist. Of course, if she does somehow manage to show up somehow, she won't love what I have in store for her. Cause in the case <laughs> she does make it to our match, will be. A hardcore false count anywhere match. Ooh, someone's ass is gonna get kicked tonight. That night. Yeah, I was gonna say it's next week. I said that night. Damn it. So Anna, my bestie in the world, if you're watching this, you should just forfeit the briefcase because you don't want any of the punishment I have in store for you. If you don't, I'll just have to be aggressive. B E aggressive. <laughs> be aggressive. B E aggressive. <laughs> Catchy. All right, there you heard it. It will be uh, cheerleader Mickey and Anastasia Chaos for the contract holder this coming Saturday at April Fool Hardcore Rule in a false count anywhere match. And it appears that that briefcase is on the line. Anastasia unable to compete this week. We'll see where she's at next week, and we'll see what uh, what happens uh, during April Fool Hardcore Rule because, uh, as everybody knows, that's the craziest event uh, pretty much in the wrestling world here on, in Second Life. Fellas, we got tag team action. Diamonds Division up next. All right, so let's get it cracking then. Introducing first. Run. Parts unknown. She weighs in at 200 and stands in at 6 foot 5. She is Misery. And her tag team partner
and her tag team partner from wherever she pleases. She weighs in at 125 and stands in at 5 foot 6. She is Andrea Daka. Their opponents for today, a combined weight of 273 pounds. We could call this the champions team. First, we have the SLCW women's champion, Kendra, the showgirl, hailing from Detroit, Michigan. And her partner, the DCWF women's champion, the face of lace, Nina Prater, hailing from San Antonio, Texas. All right, we got us some Diamonds Tag Team action here. On one side, we got the Goody Two Shoes team over there of Nina and Kendra, both champions. And on the other side, we got Miss Hey Ray and someone who I like to refer to as La Gitana Fuerte. Gitana is how you say gypsy in Spanish, by the way. Andrea Dalka. I don't know how this is going to go because I know both teams have been beefing with each other for the past few weeks, getting each other's faces, trying to brawl. Who knows? This might go out of control for what we know. <laughs> okay, looks like Nina's going to be starting for the champions team. And Miss A. Ray for the other team. Other team? Really? Really? Yes, really. <sighs> you, you better hope Ray did not hear you. I'll tell her to her face. I don't worry. Yeah, right. Say that after she tries to put you in a headlock or whatever. I dare you to as well, Killian. I, I worry more about a Andrea's uh, tambourine from behind. Uh, Nina there with the drop kick on Misere. Uh, 
Oh, dang. It looks like Misery is going to put some work here. Nina's pretty much showing her... <laughs> she's showing her how tough Texas really is. Well, Nina last week had an awesome match with... Um, our very own Nikki Rocks. And it's the first time Nikki has lost to Nina. So... Um, Misery now taking control after that slam she just put Nina in. The bad things seem to happen around Miss A. Ray, so... We'll have to see what's going to happen. The bad things, of course, because that's... Miss A. Ray over there. Showing that brute strength of hers, not to mention she was a former member of Supremacy. Oh, and she just keep choking Nina, the life out of Nina. Ouch. Wait a minute, what the hell is Kendra doing inside that ring? Hi. I'm gonna try to help her tag partner out, by the looks of it. Oh no, she's trying to cheat, that's what she's trying to do. Oh, but it looks like steps in. stepping in outside too, keeping a watch on Kendra. That's right, go back to your corner. And Misere now just still still not even choking watching the it. life out of Nina Prater. She wants to end this quickly for sure. And Nina tried to go for a pin, but only got two counts. Well, it looks like Kendra is now in officially. Yeah, uh, it was a clean tag made by Nina. Ooh. This is quite the hair pull slam on Kendra. But we all know Miss Ray don't play games. No. Just no, Miss Ray stomping on Kendra. Nina getting upset about it, trying to get the ref to do something. Hey, he's doing a perfect job. Depends on whose side you're looking at it from. Uh, the side I can want to look from. That's what. Nina trying to rally uh, Kendra up. Oh yeah, like that'll help. And Andrea now, <laughs> she's holding on Kendra it's just so she doesn't pretty much do anything slick on Mizay Ray. Oh, that was glorious. Oh, uh, martial arts kicks on Kendra. Kendra's in a bad spot right now, being trapped in that corner. Oh, she sure is. Ray tags in Andrea. Come on, ref. Hey, 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 the ref knows how to do his job. Now hold on there. Oh! 
high and low tag team move from both these girls, and Kendra is officially down. As Andrea goes for the pin here, one, two, no, only a two count. Nina's trying to get Kendra's attention to get her over, to get her in. I'll try as she might, but Andrea's just preventing that. And Kendra's get, uh, getting up real slow. Andrea now with the face lock. Ref. Need to try and reach for a tag. Her arms aren't that long. Nope. Kendra creates some separation between her and Andrea. But Andrea caught on to her like glue. Oh, got her on the ropes now. Yeah, Nina. Andrea's just taunting Nina. <laughs> A real good stare down between Andrea and Nina right now. It gives Kendra a chance to catch her breath. And Misery now yelling at Andrea to finish off Kendra. Hey, I love how these gypsies can be crafty. Trying to use the Ooh. ropes. Ooh. That didn't look good at all. Painful. Oh, painful. Whew. The referees keeps warning them, but they don't seem to even be paying attention to the referee. Well, yeah, I mean, he has a kick me sign taped on his back. Do you really think they want to listen to him? Yeah, that's true. That's very true. Please. I'm sure Miss A. Ray would oblige him after the match. Uh, knowing Miss A. Ray, she probably will. <laughs> That'll be funny to see. Kendra dragged to the center of the ring by Andrea. Yeah, what Andrea and Misery is pretty much doing here is preventing any means necessary for Kendra to tag in the fresh Nina over there. Oh boy, Nina really wants to be in there, but neither of these girls are ha letting her. Oh, wait a minute! Oh, Nina yeah. broke up that pin. That could have been a three count. Damn it. But Miss Ray comes back. Oh, and she oh. blows line the hell out of Nina Prater. But I'm pretty that sure is... Andrea would have gotten the win there had Nina not interfered. Hmm. We'll never know. That, that, that's a fact. Damn it. Oh, Ms. A. Ray now taking care of Nina Prater while Kendra is... Oh, bro, she's taking care of Andrea now. I'm going to get Strong shots. Strong shots from Kendra. And her... Uh, sp spinner on the pole. 
Ooh. Oh, good clothesline there. She goes for the pin. One. Two. Only a two counts. That was close. She throws Andrea to where the corner where Nina is. Oh. She just pushes Andrea. Oh, and she goes for that lap dance. Ugh, gross. Ugh. I need to get a... Uh... Might need to get some, uh, Lysol for Andrea there. Now Nina's tagged in. Uh-oh. Remember, she's fresh in the match. Oh, boy. Nina now Irish whips Andrea as she go hits the Spine Buster once Andrea comes back to her. Oh, Nina signaling for the lace cuffs. Oh, crap. Forearm drop, and she pins Andrea. One, two. Oh, Miss A. Ray stops it in time, but Kendra jumps on Miss A. Ray and throws those punches on her. Oh. Oh, this match has already gone off control. I feel sorry for the referee just trying to keep order here. Yeah, that's most likely never going to happen. It's probably the first time he's seen women, so... Probably doesn't even know how to handle them. <laughs> Rightfully so. Some geek. Nina trying to get her breath on the ropes. Oh. Miss A. Ray having Kendra in a bear hug. Oh boy, and she's just targeting at the area where Kendra's injured, I believe. I've counted to four. Oh, both went oh. outside of the ring. And now it's just up. Nina and Andrea. Andrea working the front face lock now on Nina Prater. Pulling her to the center of the ring. Oh, yes she is. Well, she's just letting Nina have it. Can't really see what's happening between Miss A. Ray and Kendra on the side. Uh, me neither. I can't see them. Yeah, then again, I'm sitting a bit farther away, so... Eh. Andrea tried to go for a pin, but Kendra grieves just in and grabs the foot. Damn it. Oh, I can see Miss A. Ray starting to get up over there. She doesn't look real, looks worse for wear. 
I guess Kendra hasn't really gotten rid of her cheating ways, it seems. <laughs> I knew she couldn't stop. Nina gets up a bit slow. And Misere is now behind Kendra. Oh, she hits that back suplex on the outside as Nina hits the monkey flip on Andrea. Alright, Misere taking care of Kendra on the outside while Nina catching her breath. Nina hits that face of lace face bulldog lace. on Andrea. One, two, three! What? That's the match! I bet the ref counted too fast. I don't know. Oh, Miss A. Ray in the ring now. Uh oh. Nina and Andrea going here to at take it. Take care of some more business now. Better turn around, Nina. <laughs> no. Wasn't it the winners get the stipu uh, set the stipulation for the match at April Fools? Oh How yeah, that Fools? is true. Oh, death strike on oh, Nina Prater. Wonderful one too. Ray checks up on Andrea. We got a couple. Uh, Vincent jumps into the ring to try to break him up. Another referee coming down to the side. We got Ryder Quan Queen here. Well, they already took care of business right there, so there's really nothing much left to do. And now we gotta wait till Nina and Kendra come around a little bit, see what their stipulations are gonna be. Oh, I can't wait to hear this. Kendra's getting up slow. Checking on Nina. Oh, that's cute. Kendra well, helps see. her up. And which one of them are, let's see, what the stipulations might be for April Fool's Hardcore Rules. <laughs> Yeah, Kindred is saying, Alright, we got stuff to say. Alright, someone gonna toss her mic. Alright. Since I love my fans, and I know they will love me, I want to bring them all to bring their favorite weapons for me to use. I need to stop Ray's reign of terror, and I know with all your help I can. We can do it together. So that's it. Me versus Ms. A. Ray for the SLCW Women's Championship, and my fans bring the weapons. Now it's getting scary. As she hands the mic to Nina now.
Andreas. This isn't over. I might get you later, Ray, but this isn't open. This isn't over. April Fool's hardcore rules, Andrea. Just you and me. I'm supposed to pick it. The stipulation. But I'm the champion, and I want you... I want you to pick it. I don't care what it is. I don't care if you bring out flaming tables. I don't care if we fight in a barnyard. I don't care. You pick it. And I'll see you next weekend. Oh, I guess Nina has told those two what what's going to happen next week. Mm, is that even a good idea for Nina to do? To let Andrea pick it? Hmm. Well, sh we shall see. Well, Andrea says, okay. If I pick the match... Then I want... A... Romani Market Match. Romani Market Match, huh? Mm, Interesting. What the thing. fuck is a Romani Market Match? I think they fight with market stalls set up around the ring. I don't know. See you at April Fool's Hardcore Rules. You said what? Yeah, but I'm guessing that's what it is. I don't know. Shoot. Okay, then. Thank you, Mr. Nordo. Can't you just sit, you know, finish it off by saying burning it? She might regret that later on. Of course she will. <laughs> Please. The champions did look strong. Alright, now just a couple weeks ago, the DCWF was turned on its ear with an upset at Showdown over the uh, SLCW Championship as Triple X Ryan Fury defeated Marcus Raymond almost out of nowhere on a Saturday Showdown uh, to, to gain uh, the SLCW men's title. And Ryan, uh, to his credit, uh, has been a fighting champion. Ever since he's taken on any and all comers, and just a couple weeks ago, or just a few days ago, as a matter of fact, uh, Ryan said that Marcus was, uh, you know, man enough to give him a shot, and any time, anywhere, any place uh, that Marcus wants his rematch, he can have it. And I'm being told, I got a text this morning and an email uh, that the former SLCW champion Marcus Raymond, the big guy, has a few words, and he wants to come out and address this DCWF Saturday Showdown crowd and the SLCW Men's Champion, Ryan Fury. Uh, I'm quite interested in what he's got to say uh, as he held that title and he defended that title numerous times. He almost looks naked without it. Uh, let's bring the man out.
folks, it is great to see you all today. You might be wondering why I am not wearing my resting gear. The answer is simple. I'm not booked in today's show, but that doesn't stop me from making an appearance today at Showdown. You see, we're just one way away from April Fool's Hardcore Rules. One week until I will regain the SLCW Championship from Ryan Fury. Now, this is the time where usually the bullshitting and trash talking starts. But I'm not gonna do that. You see, there is a curtain among of respect between Ryan and myself. We are both professional wrestlers. Yes, I said professional wrestlers and not sports entertainer. We both respect the business and its past. So, there's not really a reason to insult each other before such an important match. There are only two things that needed to be talked about. First, who will be the champion after April Fool's? Well, I can't say that now, but I'm sure we will find out next Saturday. And the second question is, of course, what type of match we are going to face off? I mean, we all know April Fool, Hardcore Rules, every match needs a stipulation. So what shall we pick? Maybe a submission match? Maybe a street fight? A bar pro? False count anywhere? How in the cell? I don't know. Because as I'm a you know, I'm a fair competitor, I'm a fair wrestler, it's and so on. So I'm gonna do what probably most people don't do. I gonna let the champion pick the stipulation, so what's it gonna be, champ? What type of match you want? All right, you can cut the lights. Let's get it simpler. How's everybody doing here at DCWF? I heard you talking about it. You said it every second since me and you have been going through our little road. I respect the hell out of you. If you want a rematch at April Fool's, you got it. Great, so... What type of match you want? Because it's you're the champion, so pick your stipulation. Sure, 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 sure. Well, you know, you're right. We could have a a regular match. Could have a submissions match. I mean, how, how about how about you guys? What do you guys want to see? I just want to see a straight up fight or maybe a cage match now that sounds like an idea maybe a cooking contest or a food fight <laughs> no just kidding all right who wants to see a cage match between Ryan Fury and Marcus Raymond and April Fool Climbing your ass out. That's all you get. Let's do old school. No fucking door. You climb your happy ass out that cage. You win my belt. 
If you can't bring me down long enough to climb your happy ass out of the cage, trust me, I will. Right, that sounds just up my alley, I would say. So if you want a cage match, so shall it be. Alright, so, though I do respect the hell out of you, I think you take taking quite a bit of these people's time. Who, who's ready to see the next match? you and I hope that you're ready because it's my place oh. it ain't coming back yeah well it will be come back to me All right, there you have it. The SLCW Men's Championship will be decided this next Saturday at April Fool Hardcore Rule right here at the Triumph Pavilion in an escape-only cage match. That means through the door or over the top in order to win the belt. No pins, no submissions inside the cage. No need for a referee. Cage matches don't get any more Hardcore than that, fellas. Let me tell you something. If you've ever set foot inside the iron of a steel or the steel of a steel cage, and you're enclosed and there's nowhere for you to go, and you've got an opponent who's hungry, there's nothing you can do but fight or flight. I promise. Well, going into April Fool's Hardcore Rules, I was doing some back uh, back uh, tracking, so to speak, on different matches. And I, I happen to see the uh, cage match mentioned. But I don't see Ryan's name at, at a cage match anywhere. Uh, you know, April Fool Hardcore Rule, uh, the cage match is a staple. Uh, both Marcus and Ryan have been in the cage. I think back to War Games, uh, when Marcus was in uh, the, the double rings covered in the cage. Uh, certainly, uh, both of them have uh, the experience, but nothing quite like this uh, with a no escape uh, it, with with an, with an opponent uh, who's absolutely hungry. It's going to be crazy. Fans, before we get on to the night's uh, you know, final bit here, uh, we want to take a minute to remind you that starting in May, we are filming and we're going to be airing with Res TV. You can check out DCWF Full Tilt uh, Wednesday nights at 3 p.m. on Res TV. Also, May 2nd, uh, one week after April Fool Hardcore Rule, uh, the spring is, hardcore season is over, and we go into our summer madness tour, and we kick it off May 2nd at my, at my radio, my studio, FM. Uh, it's going to be big. It's going to be huge. Uh, all the top stars of the DCWF are going to be there, uh, as well as some fans. We're going to be reaching out. We're going to be reaching new audiences. Uh, I am absolutely excited. We hope to see you all there. Uh, if you have a Facebook page, and most people have a Facebook page, where else are you going to have your drama in the middle of the week? Uh, make sure you uh, search DCWF on Facebook, like our Facebook page, so that you can keep up with any and all events that the DCWF is doing. And if you want to be a member of the DCWF fan group, shout out in open chat. Hey, bitch, I want a fan tag, and somebody will hook you up, or there are group joiners all around the arena. Uh, you know, before we get to the nice main event... <clears throat> I'm told, I'm told that we got more words, we got a, we got a lot of talking going on tonight, because everybody's getting psyched, everybody's getting mentally ready uh, for the uh, DCWF April Fool Hardcore Rule, quite possibly the deadliest event in Second Life Wrestling, and the DCWF World Heavyweight Champion, Mad Mike Freeman, uh, music playing on his way to the ring right now.
Yeah, yeah, boo all you want. Now, let's get down to business. Let's talk about one of my favourite days of all time. For all of you who may or may not know, next week is my favourite time of year. Hell, it's like Christmas. It's April Fool's Hardcore Rules. An event where every match, every match is no rules, no disqualification, and no limits on what I can do. They do not call me a ha the Hardcore Dragon for nothing. This is my realm, my element, my bloody world, and I pity the poor sods who dare to enter it. Speaking of poor sods, there are two little snivelling little bitches who want to face me for my title. The thing is though, I wrecked them before. I've already beaten them and they're in the back bickering, bitching and complaining that they don't have the shot at my title. These two men I'm thinking of and talking about is our resident Uncle Fest himself, Jack O'Lantern and the Sputnik stretcher, Vladimir. Now I've got something to say to these two. Vladimir, I don't care how many wrestling tournaments you have won. All those holds and pins don't matter when a steel chair is crashing into your face and blood is running down it. And also, I don't tend to care for pathetic poser who can't understand that Halloween has been over a long ass time ago. Now, me and Numbers talked backstage and don't deny it, Numbers, you did, you bold piece of shit. We talked backstage and we both come to an agreement. These two whiners need to put up or shut up. They're going to wrestle right now to see who is unlucky enough to get years knocked off their life on April Fool's Hardcore Rules next week. I think that's a good main event. I should be the book of myself. Interesting, interesting, interesting. Well, all right, let's go on introducing these folk here. Introducing first from Magnitogrosk in the former Union of Soviet Socialist Republics. He weighs in at 142 kilograms and stands in at 2.10 meters. This is Vladimir Polyatevska. Vlad's opponent coming to us from Elm Street, the darkest corner. The men's chaos contract holder coming to us at a height of 6'1", 218 pounds. Jack O'Lantern.
All right, it is true. I did have a conversation with Mike backstage and explained to him that, uh, you know, amongst the entire roster of the DCWF right now, uh, if there's any two that lay claim to the DCWF World Heavyweight Championship and a rightful heir to a match uh, at April Fool Hardcore Rule, it was, it was one of these two. And in those discussions, Vladimir, you know, pointed out time and time again that in the triple threat match he never lost he was never pinned it was jacko that was pinned and when i went over to jacko's locker room to to explain to him you know where we were at he just looked me dead in the eye with that with that blank stare of his and held up his chaos for the contract briefcase and reminded me uh you know of his position in, in the rankings of the dcwf and uh, it comes down to this, a number one contenders match here uh, at Showdown. Now, it don't even matter to me who's going to win this match. As I said before, April Fool's Hardcore Rules is my element. And it doesn't matter who it is. It could be the best, best fucking wrestler in the entire world. It don't matter when the barbed wire is going and scraping across your face and a, and a steel chair is concussing you. Well, right now the two wrestlers are just in a stare down, and you can see the size difference between Vlad and Jack. It just doesn't bode well for Jack. Well, good strategy yeah. on the part of Jack O'Leary getting himself into a number one contenders match because if he wins here today, not only is he the number one contender, but he still has the briefcase. That is two opportunities to walk away with the DCWF World Heavyweight title one week from now. Uh, but he has got a mountain to climb uh, in the mad Russian Vladimir Politaevska because this guy has been unbeatable and, and has walked through and destroyed any and all opponents since he set foot in the DCWF. Now, Jacko, I think he went for like a double leg takedown, but Vladimir sprawled out of the way and just shoved him away. And as, as, I, as I said before, Vladimir has all those amateur wrestling background, all those medals, all those all those got gold trophies. It don't matter in the ring to me. This is a fight, not a wrestling match. Or at least it is going to be next week. Series of elbow strikes from Jacko. Doesn't seem to have any effect on Vlad. Well, he is doing the right strategy to get rid of a grappler. When there's a, when there's a monster grappler, you don't you shouldn't grapple, grapple with him. You should try and get to the distance to strike him. And I think Jacko's doing a terrible mistake, getting trying to now chain wrestle with him, getting a wrist lock and a hammer lock. He doesn't seem to be scared of the giant. That's for sure. He's just going right after him. Well, well, he he. Uh, Vladimir talks a big game. He looks intimidating, but I'm not scared of him. I've already beaten before. Why would I even be scared of him? He still got him. Vlad breaks it easily. Goes into yeah, a hammer lock, uh, wrist lock. Now he's, now he's locking up in a wow. single single collar leg tie up and oh uh, chopped to chopped to the chest. That's gonna leave a mark. I right, whipping Jack into the corner. <laughs> oh. oh face rammed right into the corner that that is padding la uh, lads and lasses but it's not that much padding it's still steel on the on those corner or at the corner post it was, a nut, it was a very impromptu drop toe hold by jack that set that all up i'm so sorry carry numbers i'm not letting you speak well actually i'm not sorry because i think everyone wants to hear my voice over you two Hey, I'm just kind of sitting back, <laughs> enjoying the yeah, show. I don't and, care. I'm I'm just my, watching the my, show. I can vouch for your credentials because of a certain match that we did back in the day, but I can't remember how that one ended. So we'll just pretend that uh, yeah, it never happened. The one where you slipped on onto a whole pile of trash. Yeah, I remember that one. You klutz. <laughs> really? Yeah, really. Instead of Vladimir with that power now, just <laughs> manually Jack, 
shoving him down to the mat. Those are things we don't talk about. Oh no, I like to hear more. <laughs> it, it, it sounds like instead Ooh. of numbers taking the trash out, numbers was the trash taken out. Womp womp. In the ring now, Jack O'Lantern hemmed up in the corner. Vladimir uh, using that size and the strength. Uh, also, that great amateur experience. Jack O'Lantern in trouble now. Snake Eyes off the top turnbuckle. Vladimir t tossing Jack out like a rag doll. Wow. I can't remember what the weight difference is, but it looks like at least 100 pounds. You know, Vladimir dragging him to the center of the ring. Good ring awareness at the moment. Now Vladimir picking up Jacko. Pulling that pathet pathetic little mohawk of his. Speaking in some kind of Russian. And oh, choke slam. Cho uh, a choke slam. I, like, I think he likes to call it the hand of the state. Oh, goes for a flag goes for One, a pen. Two and a two count. It's good to keep in mind that Vladimir is not your new friendlier uh, kind of Russian. He is old school Iron Curtain, uh, and he still very much lives by that code. And uh, everything he does is 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 for uh, for Mother Russia, including that uh, big stomp to the chest there on Jacqueline. He gives Vladimir Putin wet dreams, basically. Pretty much. Uh -huh. He's going for a neck crank right now. Shit. Uh, he's just trying to break the ne neck of Jacko. With how big his thighs and arms are, I wouldn't be surprised if he could succeed in that. Was it going to be the first death in DCWF? Yeah, you know, it's, it's not without mentioning that back at WrestleFest in February, Jack O'Lantern won that contract, beating the odds in the chaos for the contract match, going up the ladder, uh, getting that briefcase off, the, uh, off of the ceiling there that was suspended, and uh, that might have been the most grueling, most taxing uh, match uh, he's I've ever seen him in, and he's been in some pretty big matches. Uh, so uh, you know, surely he's been vetted uh, for whatever you might throw at him in an April Fool hardcore rule. He just has to get there. Now oh, Vladimir giving up with that neck wrench, lay laying uh, Jacko fall to the ground. Now he's picking him. I think he, I think he's wanting to toy with Jacko at the moment, but he shouldn't to toy with him. Because he needs to, he, he needs to actually finish this to go up against me. I don't care if he's fresh or if he's not. Oh no, he's lifting me up. Is he walking him to near the ropes or something? He's definitely displaying his strength. Just putting him right up into the gorilla press. Just holding him there. And he held on for too long, and oh! Reverse into it in the DDT, spiking Vladimir's head into the canvas. A DDT connects, but Jack O'Lantern has to go all the way down with him and finds himself in the mat, rolling over for the pin. One, two, two count only as Vladimir gets that shoulder up. No, it looks like you got it coming up for you on Saturday, no matter which way this goes down. Well, I think, as I said before in the ring there, this is a very, this is a plethora of wrestling right now but to be quite honest it doesn't matter if you're a good wrestler or not you have to have the will the determination and the just downright toughness to win in a hardcore match and that's why i've displayed i have in boatloads i am the toughest guy in sl wrestling and and their ground sweep kick into a sharpshooter he calls that the te Texas Chainsaw. Chainsaw. Yup. And he's trying to... Modified Texas Clover Leaf. 
He's, he's got it expertly applied in the center of the ring. Vladimir, not many places to go. Working his way to the side now. Working his way to the ropes. Using that uh, like enormous upper body strength. Jacko holding on. But it looks like he might make it. Well, I think he's grabbing the ropes right now. Oh, fuck. Right, Jacko, the ref calls it just the ropes. Go. Oh, they break the hold finally. Now I think Jacko's strategy, he wants to ground the big Russian. Because he might have all the muscles in the world, but if he can't walk, he can't fight. That's certainly putting a, uh, certainly putting some stress on the back and the legs of, uh, Vladimir Politevsko with the, uh, with the modified Texas Cloverleaf, the Texas Chainsaw. Uh, he's, oh, big, big backhanded chop, and Vladimir is getting back in this as he fights his way out of the ropes. Uh, and, oh, picking over the spine buster. I think that's his amateur wrestling co coming into play. He'll almost look like a huge double leg almost, just slamming him, him in the canvas. Did you see how his how the back of his uh, head whipped? Now that amateur background certainly services him well uh, in the ring in a normal match. How it will come into a play in a hardcore match, uh, whatever that winds up being, should he win here today, uh, is, is going to be hard to tell. Uh, he's a grappler. He, he likes to slam. He likes to uh, suplex and use the holds. Uh, when it comes down to uh, using your environment, using weapons, we haven't yet been able to get a glimpse of what Vladimir might do. Uh, so it's it's anybody's guess, but that amateur background doesn't often translate well uh, into that type of fight. Oh, rolling over. Oh, kick in the face. Uh, as I was going to say, it doesn't matter how big you are. I, th I think everyone thinks these big men are... So and oh, scratch that, he's going for a pin. One, two, and a two count. Oh, well, I guess the shoulder up. And we keep uh, going. Yeah, what I was gonna say is these these big men, they look all tough and, and everything. They can they can dish out the punish, but I think I think a lot of the time when they're on the defensive, when they're on the back foot, they crumble. And everyone's on the back foot in, in hardcore rules. Everyone gets hurt. Everyone gets a good steal to the face. Everyone gets gets destroyed in this match, and I don't think he's gonna be able to take it. Definitely not mentally. I think he's used to dominating people rather than being dominated. Oh, Vlad got, all, got up awfully slow there. Oh, diving DDT by Jacko, showing his ambidexterity. He's going for a pin. One, two, and a two count. And the referee showing his math skills uh. by... Two point nine eight five three five whatever. I'm gonna give him wedge when he gets in the back. Jack's up. Oh, he's got a health flat up. I don't know if it is. He's a nerd. Now Vladimir lifting up. All oh, that delayed. Oh, delayed vertical suplex. Now, ja Jacko favoring his back at the moment. Vlad just standing over him. Vladimir, uh, he said in a promo before he's on a mission to destroy pa like these patriotic heroes or whatever the weak Americans find our heroes. And that's what he's planning to do right now. I don't know why he thinks I'm a hero, because I don't. I don't really give a fuck about the people over here. I just care about what what's under, over my arm. Ooh. 
Ooh, Jack surprises him with a drop kick to the face. Oh, and he went over the top rope. Jack's known, sure. for, Jack's known for high risk, but I don't know if he's going to try anything. To be honest, I don't care. It benefits me how, how much they're going to put into it in this match, because if they're going to destroy themselves just to get a title at me, then they're not going to be 100%, and they need to be 100% to even stand a chance against me. And, oh! Oh, he, t he tried a suicide dive on the outside, but Vladimir caught him into a front face lock. And oh! oh. Into a power slam. He caught him and just whipped him. He just dragged him around like a rag doll. Now Vlad's just picking him up like a rag doll. And dip. And Mr. Dick Nerd William has put it correctly. You can't win. You can't win win this match if you're both on the outside. They they can't brawl on the outside for too long, or they're going to be carried out. And Vladimir whipping Jack, I think, in, into that post. He's trying to at least. And he whips him again. Ah. Oh, Jacko tried tried to stop it, but he couldn't stop it for too long. Vladimir too strong for him, whipping him into that ring post. Oh, big boot between a rock and a hard place. His head must be crushed. Sandwiching his head between his boot and the ring pose. That looks Refer deadly. Referee's count to seven. I see these guys keep trading blows outside the ring. It's not going to work. Vladimir, his knee just gave out. I'm not sure if it popped, but the sheer impact of his knee me going into into that ring post and probably that Texas chainsaw that little Texas clo clover leaf and Vladimir just fell to the ground I think his knee popped something he's clenching it he's up to the count of nine come on come on come on get and it's there's a tank count <laughs> no winner Great, we're well, one week away from April Fool Hardcore I don't have a number one contender for the goddamn fucking main of- <laughs> <laughs> Looks like I've got a free ride next week. Alright, I'm I'm gonna be on holiday for, for about a week. I'll see you guys later. <laughs> ah! Oh no. <laughs> the fans don't like it. I fucking love it. I'm going to get paid and do nothing. Double count out. But anyway, I'm happy with that result. How How is everyone else? I don't know. It's just going to make it that much more interesting next week. Do we wind up with a triple threat match again? Anyway, we'd like to thank you all our fa- Oh, Korea's back! Yay! <laughs> yeah, I'm here. <laughs> I was just watching, it was just, really? <laughs> wow. Oh, take us out, Korea. Well, anyways, uh, no, you take us out. <laughs> Alright. Anyway, for the first thing we want to mention before before anybody leaves, we do have the donation box up front of us called the ass, so tap that ass with if, whatever you feel you can help us with, where you are non for profit. Everything that we gain gain through the donations helps to keep running the sim, keeps and keeps putting on the show for you fans out there. Again, we've got the group joiners around the ring, we've also got the slag out front. Hope to see everybody right back here next week, same time. Same and place. Now, and we can also say same channel. Same channel. Because <laughs> we'll be on Res TV. Yay! Thank you all that for is. coming. Yeah, that's been Killian, and I've been Kyrie. We'll see you next time.
This video was filmed on location by Zarakan Productions. Zarakan Productions is an umbrella group for many YouTube shows and businesses both inside and outside of Second Life. Please go to zarakan.com for a complete listing of shows and businesses associated with Zarakan Productions and their own media links. Zarakan Productions shows have been organized alphabetically in playlists in a year, month, day format for easier video navigation. Multiple part videos have been named accordingly starting with part 1, and the last video of a multiple part video series will have end as a part of its title. Please like, comment, and share this video as it helps both Zarakan Productions, and the creators of this video's content. Also, be sure to check the playlists for past episodes of show content, and subscribe to this channel for future videos. Thank you for watching, and happy wandering.